Hi everybody, Joe here again. So have you got have you got five minutes so we can have a little catch up? Maybe get that kettle on. Do you fancy a brew? Cheeky biscuit maybe? Have you got a biscuit tin? Is that one of those things? Do you have one in your house? It's a bit like a button tin, isn't it? Have you got a button tin? I must admit I've got a lovely button tin. I think it's just something you have to have, isn't it? I mean, I use it for being creative, obviously, for my cards. I don't know about sewing a button on. I mean, I've got a sewing box as well. Again, hmm, not very good at that. My sister was the one who always did the sewing. I can sew a button on, but to be fair, the last time I sewed a button on was actually on, on a card where I'd made a man's shirt. Hey-ho, hmm, that's the sort of thing we do, isn't it? Here I am, rabbiting on again. So, how are you feeling? How's it been? I hope you had a good weekend. Um, I thought I'd come in today, really. I just wanted to have a catch up with you. I just wanted to pop in and share five minutes with you and just see how you're doing. And as you've seen recently, I've done a few videos using grey. I love doing monochromatic cards. And because of now using the, the chalk pastel pencils and it's just lovely to um, embrace grey. And what's fabulous is so many of you have actually followed suit and done some lovely monochromatic and grey work, which is just lovely. You know, that, that's all I could ever wish for. And, and it absolutely makes my heart sing when I, I see work like that. So... I thought we'd put a bit of a twist on it today and we're going to go greige and this is when we're going to mix some grey and some beige. I mean I've always got to think outside the box haven't I? I've got to put, push the bar a bit and give you something a bit of a bit of a challenge so I want you to be a bit more creative. So we're going to mix grey with another colour. So as I say I've gone for beige and I've created greige. So we're going to do a bit of greige work today. And yes, you probably think I'm mad. <laughs> well, I am, but there we go. And the two, I've gone for oxides. And the two oxides I've used is weathered wood for my grey and pumice stone for my beige. And the tones of these just work so well together. And this is the design I've come up with. Now, I've purposely left this area blank because quite often when I'm making my cards, I know a lot of ladies ask about sentiments. Some I do like to leave blank. Um, sometimes if I stamp a verse, I mean, Lavinia, we've got some lovely verses, but it might not be appropriate for what I want to send this card. And often, I don't know if you like me, you need those emergency cards. Now, for me, this is perfect because this could be a birthday card. It could be a get well soon card could even be a good luck card so I just want to leave that space so then I've got room to add my sentiment in I mean if it's a birthday card and I want to add a name I've got room to add the name as well so that was my thinking behind this so we're going to start off with and this is um, a piece of card and this is five and a half inches square the idea being that then you can put some coordinating back in um, and it goes on a six by six card blank but again should you wish you could put it on a seven by seven again you can always extend it or if you're into the larger cards an eight by eight and I would probably if I was putting this on an eight by eight I'd probably put some more of this lovely stencil work on my backing card just to make the um almost to frame it and, and extend the design so as I say we're going greige today <laughs> bit of greige so what we're going to do is we're going to start off and do our stamping. Oh, we better mask off the area first, hadn't we? Now, again, I'm using low-tack tape. If you do use a low-tack tape, make sure it is a low-tack. Um, you don't want it to take the top of your card. And a little tip, I always... Sweet Poppy Stencils do a fabulous one and sticks too. And I was right on the inside of my tape, so I know which tape it is. Now for this one, now obviously you can measure it, but for this one, I'm just going to put it along the bottom and I find it easier if it's facing me. And then I'm just going to put a double. So I'm just going to almost put it up there. So it's just double width for me. I mean, again, you could measure it if you wanted. But that's my 
way of doing it. And what we'll do is we'll start with our stamping and I'm going to bring in the fairy toadstool. And for the stamping, because we're going greyish, I'm going to use morning mist because I just want that nice grey tone. And then when I bring in the beige, you see, if when I've done all the grey work on the last couple of uh, YouTubes and things we've done, it's obviously stayed quite grey. What I like is bringing this beige in, it sort of warms it up a little. And also I can add my, add my it's not easy to say, is it? Add my highlights. <laughs> so that's my theory with this. But it did get me thinking and I thought, oh, I wonder how many other colours. Maybe I could mix grey with maybe a lilac. Grey lilac? Would that work? What about pink? You see, this is what happens. It gets my head thinking. And I'm thinking of all the things we can do. But often that's what we need as crafters because sometimes we get a bit, you know, when we find our mojo goes and we almost get a bit stale. It's nice to have something a bit fun and a bit different to do. So we'll stamp this lovely fairy toadstool and I just want to put it off centre slightly. And again, you know me by now, I have to do my stamping to the side. Now, your tape, although it's only got a little ledge, do make sure you press down hard there. Now we've got some lovely new subscribers and thank you to those who've subscribed recently. And a few of you have said that you're new to uh, crafting and stamping and um, that you're really enjoying the journey. And what hopefully comes over is that for me, whether you're a new crafter or whether you're a crafter who's been crafting for many years often we need what I would class as quite a, a simple-ish design and there's nothing too technical here but it's nice just sometimes to mix up your stamps mix up your colours and also you know it doesn't have to be too taxing after all we craft for enjoyment so I think that's why I love coming up with just new designs and, and things that are a bit of fun because I do want to enjoy this. The, the whole process is all about enjoying ourselves. Now again, I made sure I pressed quite hard because as I say, there's only a little ridge there, but sometimes it doesn't stamp as well. Now one thing to be aware of, we're using a VersaFine. So that's quite a slow drying ink. It's a permanent ink with beautiful fine detail but it will dry slower on here so we need to be mindful of this and not catch it now i'm going to stamp pippin next pippin seems to um be in most of my designs now quite often a lot of us stamp pippin at the top sitting on our toadstool which is lovely but for this i thought it would just um almost would be better on a dl card so i'm just going to stamp pippin at the base down here and again, I'm using grey for all my stamping. So again, I'm just going to ink him up. And again, it's lots of light tapping. Um, again, if you're new to stamping, don't be tempted to actually press down too hard. You just want lots of light tapping. And unfortunately, me being me, I catch the edge of my stamps. So just with a damp cloth or a biodegradable baby wipe, you can just wipe the ink off. Now, some people can manage to stamp and it doesn't transfer me. If I stamped this, I'd get the ink off the edge. So that's another little tip. So let's just put Pippin there. Now, Pippin's a silhouette. So because he's got more ink, it will take a little bit longer to soak into your card. So again, I'm just going to give him just a, a, especially if you're new to stamping or you're a bit nervous at stamping, um, you can be tempted to lift your stamps up too soon. So that's why we say, and you know, you'll hear it again and again, give you time, ink, your ink needs time to soak into that card, especially with a silhouette. So what I want to do around him, I wanted to introduce the poppies. I love the poppies. And one of... I probably have this stamp set. It's a good 
I hate to say the word old, but it's a stamp set that's been around for a long time and it's called Group Poppies. Um, and I just love, I love the fact we get three, but the detail in these and poppies are just, I adore poppies. Now, one thing to remember with your stamps, you can obviously alter the neck slightly and when you put it on your block, so I want this poppy just facing that way a little bit. So I'm just going to pop this round to the side again. As you know, I'm into, I just love meadows and I love sort of, I mean, especially at the minute, we're sort of trying to encourage to leave areas, if we can, of grass and not cut it and let the poppies grow. I keep buying the um, packets of seeds, you know, that are the meadow ones and just sprinkling them on the hedgerows around where I live, just to sort of encourage things like the poppy, the cornflower. It was quite funny though, I bought a box, that we could, you could get a box of seeds the other day and um, there's a hedgerow just behind the fence at the back, bottom of our garden. So I said to Carl, could he just literally tip the seeds out? And um, he did, but it was a bit windy and I think a lot of them actually blew back. So I'm, I'm waiting for poppies to start growing out of his ears and on the side of his head. <laughs> But I just think things like wild poppies and beautiful. Now look, it's misstamped there a little. I wish it didn't press hard enough. Don't worry about that. We'll put the grass there. It's not a problem. So if that happens, maybe I didn't, maybe I missed that bit when I was inking up, or maybe I just didn't press down hard enough. Probably because I was talking. But again, it's good to show you it really doesn't matter. We can get round it. Don't panic over things like that. You know, we all have times when we miss stamp. It can be for lots of reasons. So I've just changed the direction of the poppy and I'm going to put it over here. And again, for me, I've not done this exactly as the original one. I do find it very hard to do the same thing twice. But again, I think in composition, it's nice to not do anything exactly, just to alter it up a little. Now, do I have, I could put another one in there, couldn't I? Do you think that would look too much? Oh, maybe we could have the other. Let's get rid of that. And this one, I think, would look nice. Just, yeah. It's quite funny because even when I'm not recording, I do talk to myself in my craft room. And it's lovely to know that some of you talk back to me. It's nice that we can craft together. And again, if you've not got these poppy stamps, I'm sure you've got something that would be just as useful. Now, there is a lovely little, I like this one. I do love the three. I love the seed heads, the poppy heads. So you see, I'm thinking I could stamp that. If I could get the stem over there, nobody would ever know. Because you won't tell them, will you? And I won't. That bit where I missed that. Now you might see my head. Let's see if we can just... There we go. See? Nobody will ever know, will they? There's always way around things. So I'll just stamp a couple more of these. I just want to alter the height and the direction just to make it look a little bit more natural. And let's put one this side. And it's always nice to have stamping off the page, such as here. I think we'll just catch that again. And then what I'm going to come in with now, just to fill those spaces, is this new... Um, orchard grass and this is just such a lovely fine it's a smaller version of the field grass and as you know I adore the field grass but what's lovely about this is it's so fine that it is just a great addition to our sort of hedgerow here without being too heavy and again just angle it might put a taller one there maybe just little one there and a couple here so it looks as though 
don't have it at all on this side again so i'm just altering the height and then a couple of little ones here it's got a space there where i think we just need yep yeah, i'm happy with that so what i would do now is give that a blot try and get in good habits of always blotting your work and if you look I use the back of the sheet of paper I've got ink on this if I'd have put that down I could have transferred it now the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to add so we've done our main stamping in the grey in the morning mist and we're going to add this lovely background and the stencil work but because this, I know this ink won't dry as quickly on here, I'm actually going to take this masking tape off and add some clean masking tape. Now, I know you might think that it, it's a bit of a waste, but for me, I'd much rather do that than risk smudging that ink. Especially because I want to blend on here. So for me... I know if I was blending some of that ink, it's just it would move. Me being me, I know it would. Now, you could leave your design like that, but I just think that's a, a, a wee bit flat. And again, just, I know I've blotted it once, but I just want to make sure and give that another good blot. Now, what I'm going to come in with is we've got the weathered wood and the pumice stone, but I want to bring, this is quite grey, and I want to bring this beige in to get our greyish. So let's come in with pumice stone, and I've just got a nice little stencil brush here. Now, again, you can use a stencil brush, you could use a smoothie, you could use a makeup um, brush, a makeup um, sponge, and we're just going to go on to the masking tape which is why for me it was important to have a new piece of masking tape and I'm just going to brush upwards see I think if I had ink on here that would smudge and if you notice I'm just gripping the bristles here because I want it flatter I just find I get a much sharper line I can peel this back a little, I can show you. You see, look, it doesn't look like you've got much there, but you're getting that lovely beige building up. I'm going to go all the way along. And I just want that beige, especially around the flowers here, the grasses, and around Pippin, and up the side. So when I've done that, going to add some more and I'm just going to come up the side here and I want to frame this a little so across the corner along the top and it's very much a flat motion so I'm doing this but quite quickly and when I ink up I'm inking up my brush on both sides look because again, I'm doing that motion where the ink is transferring. And because I'm on my non-stick mat look, I can pick the ink up off my mat. And let's have some more up the side and go around here. have a little peep yeah I'm happy with that just a tiny bit more I think under Pippin's bottom yeah that just looks a bit better look like he was floating and we don't want him floating so what I think I'll do now is bring the stencil in and for this one I've gone for glory and what I like about this is I just want to pick so I want it to look like I've got a leaf coming down. I didn't want to do any more stamping. I thought it would be too heavy. And I just wanted this sort of wispy in the background. So I'm thinking that leaf there, look, is a lovely shape as though it's coming down here. So again, I'm just going to pinch my brush. Now, I won't get just this one sort of leaf shape. 
I may get a couple of these little, I love the, the, the circles in this, the bubbles. Now again, I can lift it up, look. Yeah, that's that's lovely. Don't want it any harder than that, any deeper. So I want a nice one to come down this side. How about that one? I think that one will be nice. That'll be a nice shape there. So again, pinch my brush. Be mindful not to overdo it. Yeah, that's lovely. And then I want one in the middle and you want to keep that nice flow. So that one there, I like that shape. That almost mimics the top of the toadstool to me. That shape, if I can just put it at an angle there, I think that'll look nice. I want this one quite light. I don't want it too dark. So, yeah. Do, do you see what I... What I mean about that, for me, I like that shape there. So what I'm going to do now is add just a couple of, they can be little orbs, little circles. They're just these lovely circles. I just have a thing about circles. And there's a couple here that I quite like. Now you could mask this off. I'm not going to, just, you could, but I just, I haven't got time and to be honest as long as you're careful and if I get a tiny bit around it, it it doesn't really matter um and there's three somewhere I like those three together oh they'd look nice here look so again going for those three be mindful not to come off the edge because you'd have a straight line but again I'm pinching my brush and that just means my bristle bristles are more concentrated in that area so maybe a couple of little one's just up here oh that's nice i know a couple there oh they're tiny ones let's see if we can get those just by dabbing yeah oh they've worked really well maybe just a couple of those there okay we don't want to overcook it no pizzas little one there just to, to keep that continuity of flow yeah that's enough so i'm happy with that now, while I've got my brush, I'm just going to come in with the weathered wood. <clears throat> so now I'm going for the grey. And I'm just going to find my moon mask, which I did put somewhere safe. Oh, there we go. Now, again, you know me. I've got a little dab of Posca pen just so I don't lose my moon mask. And when it comes to the moon mask, for me, I think Pippin's looking here and he wants something to look this way. So I think if I add it there, it can be looking up at the moon. And I want to use the grey just so there's a slight contrast with that beige. They're quite similar in, in tone, but I just wanted it to stand out a little bit more. And that's why I'm going between the two. And again, always go on the mask first and brush, brush out. And let's just have a peep underneath. She says, oh, I'll take it off. I can't peep this one. There we go. That's enough. I don't want any more. I'm happy with that. So... What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some colour <clears throat> and we'll use the same inks. So I'm going to put some of my weathered wood there and some of my pumice stone there. And we're just going to watercolour. And what we'll do, right, the postman has just dropped a parcel. So do excuse me, I just need to answer the door. I'll be so quick. Right, sorry about that. I'm hoping it's it's my new ink pad. So, um, Mr. Tim Holtz with his um, is it salvaged patina? You know me. I tend to make up my own names. Um, so that's why I'm sorry I had to go, but I'm back. So what we're going to do is do some watercolor painting just to take the whiteness off our toadstool. So I'm going to use a combination. 
So let's go for the, the weathered wood. And really, and the pumice stone, and you're just going to go between your two inks and just watercolour a little bit of colour. And this is just so relaxing to do. I'll just add a little bit to my poppies here. And it's amazing how just that bit of colour there really just brings them to life. And then we can add a little bit shade under Pippin. Now again, I know some people say it doesn't matter with shadows, but I have to have it right in my head. And because my moon is here, my shadow will be over here. So I need to do that the right way. Then what I actually might do is just mix my two colours together. And then let's just paint our toadstool. So what's the weather like with you today? It's quite one of those days here. It goes black one minute and looks like it's going to pour down. And then the next minute we've got blue sky and, and, and sun. I mean, I'm not complaining because I like the blue sky and sun. Hmm. And I have to say, everything seems to be growing here at the minute. I think with that combination of a, a little bit of rain and then some sun. Everything's just having a growth spurt. Right, and we'll just go over these a little. And it's like this, I mean, I know you can use watercolour paints, you can use brush shows for your painting, but I just like to use the inks that I've got because then, again, you don't need a lot of supplies. For this, we've used a, a grey Versafine Clair ink pad and two oxide ink pads. And look what you've got. I mean, I think that is just such a lovely, lovely piece. Now, what I will do is just with this ink on here, I'm just going to get it with my paintbrush and just add a few more little just some little splats you know I like these just there Pippin's looking up at those look and just in the background here don't overdo it no pizzas right that's enough walk away missus I'm just going to wipe this now I have to say, if you haven't got weathered wooden pumice stone, they are lovely colours. And I think sometimes almost like these paler colours, people ignore. And both colours on their own, you can make a lovely card. But for me, this combination, I just think is so pretty. Now, we've nearly finished. What I want to do is normally I would just let this dry at home. I've got to be honest, I'd go and make myself another broom. <laughs> But obviously I've been a bit naughty and I've, I've answered my door, haven't I? So I can't leave you again while I go and make a brew. So what I'll do is I'll bring my heat tool in. Now, if you remember, the good thing about this is your heat tool will just unstick your low tack tape a little. So it's quite a good thing to do. I mean, I've done workshops where ladies have used tape and then they come to peel it off and, and it sticks and it is heartbreaking. And especially when you've done such a lovely piece like this. So again, I just, this is low tack, but look, just by putting the heat tool on it, it will make that it's very low tack and it will literally just peel off itself. So I'm just going to heat the back again. It'll help your card go flat. Just remember that whenever you heat from the front, heat from the back as well. And look at this, it just peels off so easy. And again, turn it inside itself so if it does have any ink on, you're not going to get that ink on your fingers. Now, you could leave this at this stage. And I think it would be lovely left. But I just want to add a little bit more to it. And I'm going to come in with my clean colour. And the only reason I'm using this is it's a brush marker, water-based, so it, it gives a nice um, brushed finish. Look, if I show you, that brush marker 
and this one's just light grey it's a lovely colour and it's just for me to add a little bit of shadow here look so underneath my toadstool I'm going to have some shadow and because my moon's this side then this side will have the shadow and again under and that side it's under here and I'm just going to add and this one will be this side, won't it? The moon's there, so my shadow's under here. Just to keep that a little bit more there, and we can just put a little on here. Just adds that little bit. Um, I, I just think it's nice to have that. And I'm going to use my Stabilo. So these are the chalk pastel pencils. And again, these are by Stabilo and I'm using, um, obviously, my grey and my beige. And this is just to add a little bit. So the grey, I'm just going to come in where I want a bit of depth. And because the chalk pastel, I'm just going to smudge it a little bit. The amount I'm using here, I know a couple have asked about fixing. If I was doing a whole piece in them, I would use a spray fixative. But because I'm just adding little highlights and, and, and dark bits, some shadow, I just smudge it with my finger and that, for me, fixes it enough. And I just want to add a bit of depth here. And again, these are the little bits that, for me, just takes your work to that next level it just gives it that nice and this is the bit for me so this I'm just going to come in and almost use my beige bring in a bit beige almost as a richness so I'm going to put it on my seed heads look and on the poppy here just on the top here not too much I just want to introduce a little bit more of the beige and I'm just introducing it on the top. And then let's add a little bit of grey underneath and just smudge them. And then I just want to... They almost like, look like little row of lights to me around the toadstool. So it's like little fairies have put LED lights look on the toadstool. And that, for me, just lifts it. Now, again, because the moon's here, it would just catch down this side, wouldn't it? So let's, again, just add. So we've got the shadow and the highlights on the opposite sides. And again, for me, it just almost brightens it up a little. It's amazing what you can do with your, your two pencils. And on the orbs, if you want, you can add a little bit of grey detail in the bottom. And then finally, I don't quite often we use a white Posca, don't we? I didn't want to come in with a white Posca because I thought it would be too stark, especially when it's, it's this grey and beige combination. So I've come in with my silver, um, what are these called? Sparkling, Signo pen. Couldn't think of the word. And again, so possibly where I would just have some highlights look, and especially with this orchard grass. I can just put some nice dots and we'll just catch a bit here and on the leaves again I didn't want to add glitter for this one I just felt I wanted to keep it I mean I have to say you know if you needed um, a sympathy card often we struggle with sympathy cards you could keep this in it's nice to have the grey tone but I think sometimes you do need even with a sympathy card a little bit of lightness I mean, obviously, I probably wouldn't put the, the silver pen on for a sympathy card, but I think you, you could use this. Um, and let's just add Pippin on his nose and a bit here that would catch. And his could even just add a little bit down this side. I'm just going to come in with the grey and add a little bit deeper there. That's better. So that's that's all there is to it really and as I say nice space here for your sentiment and if I bring in see how nice and easy it comes together and again slight difference in combination just the different way I've used those stamps and again they're all stamps we've used before 
it's nice to use stamps we've used before, stencils we've used before. Nothing too complicated, a little bit of masking off. If you don't have low tack tape, maybe you've got um, post-it notes, look. You could put a post-it note there and, and that would work well. So I, ho I hope you've enjoyed that and thank you for joining me. And I hope you're going to embrace the greyish. Maybe you could come up with other combinations. Let me know what you think. I still think grey and almost like a violet over a shaded lilac. Grey and lilac might work well together. See, more things for me to play with. That's what happens when you start creating. Your mind will just start creating. Mind you, you know me. My mind just wanders all the time. Honestly, I really have to just keep myself on task. So I'd love to see your work. If you post it on any of the Lavinia sites, do tag me in, please, because I'd love to see it and I'd love to be able to comment. And always, if you want to email me, um, I'll add my email in the comments. I'm, I'm more than happy for you to email me your pictures if you're happy with what you've done. And I'm, I hope you do. I hope you have a play. Um, and you take care. Look after yourselves until I pop back in. Much love and hugs. Bye for now.